With Monster Hunter World Iceborne comes Master Rank, a challenge that will test every hunter, but with the right gear and builds, hunters can overcome anything. I'm Darkblade and we're back with even more amazing builds for Monster Hunter World Iceborne. In this episode we're going to be taking a look at full set beginner builds for the Hunting Horn. The Hunting Horn is a unique weapon, able to play songs to buff a hunter as well as his allies, but on top of that it shouldn't be discounted when it comes to its damage output. Bearing many similarities to the hammer, the Hunting Horn is an awesome blunt weapon able to easily knock out monsters with its hard hitting moves. Now when it comes to the Hunting Horn builds, hunters do have to take into account what songs a Hunting Horn has available to it, because not every Hunting Horn has the same songs and melodies. This will be demonstrated in the build shown here, but hopefully it will give you an idea of the variety of builds that the Hunting Horn can have at its disposal. Now a disclaimer for this series though, as Iceborne is still young, most hunters may not have been able to farm everything they need for the most high end end game builds. So this series will instead focus on full set beginner builds, highlighting some of the amazing armor designs while at the same time helping new players get through to the end of Iceborne's story. As a result these builds will not feature Elder Dragon loot or augmentations and the customizations will come in the form of different jewels, charms and weaponry. So the first build I use is the Bone Elementalist build. This build is a really straightforward build to use, easy to craft and does decent damage. It's also using one of the basic horns that comes with some of the best songs attached to it. So for this you'll need the entire Bone armor set which includes the Bone Helm Alpha, Mel Alpha, Van Braces Alpha, Coil Beta, Greaves Beta and I'm using a Handicraft Charm 3. For my weapon I'm using the Sforsan Dode 3 which is the basic hunting horn crafted out of metals. As for your jewels, you've got a fair few to play around with here. Now depending on your jewel collection, you may have to of course swap out some of the jewels here and there. But anyway, firstly with the hunting horn you would always want to go for your sonorous jewels to max out the horn maestro skill. I've then gone for tenderizer jewels to max out weakness exploit, an elementalist jewel to provide us that non-elemental boost. I've then gone for an attack jewel to give us a little bit of extra attack boost. I've then gone for a sharp jaw to provide us that protected polish and you'll have a jaw to play around with to which I've used a crisis jaw. This will give us the resuscitate skill. So if you've done what I've done here you should have a build with 150 health, 100 stamina which will be 200 health when you're on a hunt and taking all your relevant consumables. You have an attack of 1260 with a tiny bit of purple sharpness. You have 5% affinity which will be 55% affinity when you're on a hunt and you're attacking tenderized monster weak points. You have no element and when it comes to your songs you'll have access to attack up L, health boost L, wind pressure negated, defense up L, impact echo waves and stamina up and recovery up. And finally when it comes to your defense you're pretty much strong against every element. You're strong against fire, thunder and dragon and neutral against water and ice. So there's no downsides in terms of defense with this armor. As for the skills you have attack boost level 4, attack boost increases the raw attack of our build and at level 4 you also get a bonus 5% affinity. You have health boost level 3, increasing our maximum health to that potential 200. You have weakness exploit level 3. Weakness exploit allows us to have increased affinity when we're attacking monster weak points and this is increased even further should those monster weak points be tenderized through clutch claw attacks first. You have handicraft level 3, increasing the sharpness of this build. You have slugger level 3. Slugger is a wonderful skill that works well with the hunting horn. Basically increases the knockout potential of our attacks when we're attacking monster heads. You have Horn Maestro level 2. Horn Maestro is kind of a must skill on Hunting Horn builds. It increases the duration of your various songs. You have Part Breaker level 1, a byproduct of the gear, but allows us to potentially break monster body parts a little bit more easily. You have Resuscitate level 1. Resuscitate is a byproduct of the jewels we're using, so this is going to be optional. Basically, when you're afflicted by a blight in that, you'll have improved evasion and reduced stamina depletion. Anyway, you'll also have Protective Polish level 1. Protective Polish is a little wonderful skill, especially if you only have slivers of purple or white sharpness. Protective Polish allows you to put a protective coating over your sharpness gauge when you sharpen your weapon, which prevents any sharpness loss for a small duration of time. So it will allow us to keep that purple sharpness for longer. And finally, you'll have Non-Elemental Boost level 1, increasing the raw damage of this build so long as the weapon we are using doesn't have an element or element, or those elements or elements are hidden, as is the case with this weapon. So there you have it, as you can see it is a pretty straightforward build, it is very easy to craft so it's very easy to get your hands on. The only downside about this build to be honest is really getting a hold of the jewels, but because the jewels used in this build are a little bit more easier to come by when compared to the base monster hunter world, it shouldn't be too much of an issue. So I'd strongly recommend this build for new hunting horn players out there. So anyway, let's move on to the next build, which is the Great Gyros Paralysis build. This build makes use of the Great Gyros armor set which naturally benefits Paralysis weapons. 
so it will also be taken into battle, a Paralysis Hunting Horn, which doesn't have the best songs, so this is also a build that demonstrates the Hunting Horn's prowess, even when using a Hunting Horn that doesn't have the best songs. So for this you'll need the entire Great Gearos set, which includes the Gearos Headgear Beta, Mel Beta, Vambraces Beta, Coil Alpha, Greaves Beta and Handicraft Charm 3. And for my weapon I'm using the Queen's Flute 2, which is found in the Vespoid Hunting Horn tree. As for your jewels, you've only got a few to play around with here. Firstly, I've gone for Tenderizer jewels to give us that weakness exploit. I've then gone for a Handicraft jewel to give us a little bit of extra sharpness. I've then gone for KO jewels and Vitality jewels to provide us a little bit of the Slugger skill as well as the Health boost. And one of the Vitality jewels also came with a byproduct of a Mighty jewel, which gives us a little bit of maximum might. To be honest, at the time of this video, the Mighty Vitality jewel should have been a KO Vitality Jewel, but I had limited jewels at the time of making this video. So if you've done what I've done here, you should have a build with 150 health, 100 stamina, which would be 200 health when you're on a hunt and taking all your relevant consumables. You have an attack of 1,155 with purple sharpness. You have no affinity, although this will be potentially 60% affinity should you be attacking monster weak points and those weak points have been tenderized first. And you have full stamina and you have a paralysis rating of 560. And when it comes to the songs for the Queen's Flute, unfortunately, they don't have the best available to them. They have access to stamina use reduced L, all wind pressure negated, defense up L, ice resistance boost L, sonic waves, maximum stamina up plus recovery, and elemental effectiveness up. So if you're playing solo, I'd be mainly going for the defense up, but if you're playing in a group, then this hunting horn can be a little bit more useful than it is solo. But that's not the main reason we're using the horn. The main reason we're using the horn is because of its paralysis rating. Anyway, when it comes to your defense as well, you're pretty strong against every element. You're strong against thunder, strong against dragon, neutral against fire and ice, but unfortunately you're weak to water. But as for the skills, you'll have paralysis attack level four. Paralysis attack increases the paralysis rating and buildup of whatever weapon we're using. You have handicraft level four, increasing the sharpness of our weapon, health boost level three, weakness exploit level three, paralysis resistance level two. This is a byproduct of the gear, but allows us to resist paralysis effects a little bit more. You have slugger level two. It would have been nice to get this to level three, but like I said, in the jewel section, we had limited jewels at the time of making this video. You have horn maestro level two, effluvial expert level one, Effluvial Expert is a byproduct of the gear, but allows us to resist the damage over time effects of the lower regions of the Rotten Veil. You have Free Element Level 1. This is a byproduct of the gear. It's not really needed on this build whatsoever, but it would allow weapons that have their element or ailment hidden to be revealed. You have Maximum Might Level 1. Maximum Might is a byproduct of the jewels we're using. Basically, when we have full stamina, it will increase our affinity by a set percentage. And finally, you'll have Effluvial Resistance Level 1. Again, a byproduct of the gear, but allows us to resist the effects and build up of Valhazak's Effluvium Aura. So there you have it. As you can see, it is a pretty straightforward element build, making use of the Paralysis rating. In a way, it could be considered a crowd control build, thanks to having the Paralysis attack, but also the increased Slugger skill. So you can rotate between paralyzing a monster and then knocking them out. If you're taking into account a monster's ailment resistances and you're going up against a monster that is actually weak to paralysis or being stunned, then this build really does demonstrate that the Hunting Horn is capable of dealing out damage despite having a poor song selection. So if you're looking for a different build with your Hunting Horn, consider taking this one. Anyway, let's move on to the next build, which is the Black Diablos Knockout build. This makes use of the Black Diablos set, which comes with a wonderful set bonus, allowing us to get that Slugger skill up from just level 3 to level 5, increasing the knockout potential of this build. It also makes use of one of the strongest raw attack hunting horns in the game, making for a powerful build. So for this, you'll need the entire Black Diablos set, which includes the Diablos Nero Helm Beta, Mel Beta, Braces Beta, Coil Beta, and Grease Beta. I'm also using a Handicraft Charm 3, and for my weapon, I'm using the Rasp in Ballad, which is found in the Acidic Lavinous Hunting Horn tree. As for your jewels, you've got a few to play around with here. Firstly, I've gone for KO jewels to max out the Slugger skill. I've then gone for Vitality jewels for that health boost, an Elementalist jewel to provide us that non-elemental boost, Sonorous jewels to give us that Horn Maestro, a Sharp jewel for that protective polish. This is combined with an Enduring jewel, in this case it's a Hard Enduring jewel, to give us that item prolonger. A side note here, you may not have a Hard Enduring jewel, but just going for an Enduring jewel should be satisfactory. I've also gone for some Handicraft jewels 
to max out the handicraft rating of this build. One of them had a byproduct of a sated jaw and the other had a byproduct of a resuscitate jaw. So if you've done what I've done here, you should have a build with 150 health, 100 stamina, which would be 200 health when you're on a hunt and taking all your relevant consumables. You have an attack of 1,344 with purple sharpness. You have no affinity, unfortunately. You also have no element. And as for the songs, you'll have a few decent ones here with the rasping ballad. You have access to knockout negated, attack up L, all melody effects extended, impact echo waves and echo wave dragon. As for your defense, you're fairly strong, especially against fire and dragon, neutral against thunder, but unfortunately weak to water and ice. As for the skills, you'll have handicraft level five. You need to get handicraft to level five, unfortunately, with this build so you get that purple sharpness. You have slugger level five, increasing the knockout potential of this build even more. You have health boost level three, resentment level three, although it shows it at a potential level five here. Resentment is a byproduct of the armor we're wearing. And when we get a portion of red health on our health bar, it increases our raw attack. You have item prolonger level three, although this may be only level two, depending on what type of enduring jaws you have. Item prolonger increases the effects of certain buffs and that when we use them. And this can be used in conjunction with protective polish that allows us to keep that protective coating for longer periods, allowing us to maintain that purple sharpness for longer. You have Part Breaker level two. This is a byproduct of the gear. Horn Maestro level two, Marathon Runner level two. Marathon Runner, again, is a byproduct of the gear. It allows us to consume less stamina when we perform stamina consuming moves, such as sprinting. You have Free Mill level one, which is a byproduct of our jaws, allowing us to potentially not consume a potion when we take it. You have Resuscitate level one, Protective Polish level one, Non-Elemental Boost level one. And finally, you'll have the set bonus Diablos Ambition, Slugger Secret, allowing us to get that Slugger skill to potentially level 5 up from just level 3. So as you can see this build is a pretty strong build although it does lack affinity but nonetheless we are focusing on raw attack above everything else to do our damage. On top of that we should be always aiming for a monster's head to make full use of the upgraded slugger skill which should hopefully result in monsters being knocked out more often. On top of that thanks to resentment, that purple sharpness, non-elemental boost and the songs that the Raspin Ballad has available to it, our potential raw attack can be very high with this build. But anyway, let's move on to the fourth and final build, which is the Acidic Glavinous Maximum Might build. This build makes use of the entire Acidic Glavinous set, allowing us to effectively use the Maximum Might skill, and this is coupled with a Hunted Horn that may not be the strongest out there in terms of raw damage, but is very customizable and has access to some of the best songs in the game. So for this you'll need the entire Acidic Glavina set, which includes the Acidic Glavinous Helm Beta, Mail Beta, Braces Beta, Coil Beta and Grease Beta. I'm also using an Exploited Charm 2 and for my weapon I'm using the Gamma Chorus 2. This is the Hunting Horn found in the Dodo Gama tree. As for your jaws, you've got a lot to play around with here. First of all, I've gone for Sonorous Jaws for that Horn Maestro. I've then gone for Handicraft Jaws to increase our sharpness. Mighty Jaws to max out the maximum might skill. Some of these came with byproducts of Vitality Jaws to which I've added another Vitality Jaw to increase the health boost of this build. I've then gone for a Sharp Jaw for that Protective Polish skill, a Hard Enduring Jaw for that Item Prolonger. We got a byproduct Jaw of a Sated Jaw. And finally, that will leave you with one Jaw left to play around with to which I've gone for a Steadfast Jaw. Although depending on what Jaws you have available to you, this may have to be changed out for something else like an Enduring Jaw if you don't have a hard Enduring Jaw. So if you've done what I've done here, you should have a build with 150 health, 100 stamina, which would be 200 health when you're on a hunt and taking all your relevant consumables. You have an attack of 1,071 with a decent amount of purple sharpness. You have no affinity, which can be potentially 90% affinity, so long as you're going for monster weak points. Those weak points have been tenderized through clutch claw attacks first, and you have full stamina. You have a blast rating of 270, and when it comes to the song that the Gamma Chorus has available to it, it has access to attack boost L, defense boost L, health boost L, wind pressure negated, impact echo waves, and max stamina up and recovery. So a lot of decent songs there. As for your defense, you're strong against water and ice, but unfortunately weak to the other elements. But as for the skills, you have handicraft level five, maximum might level five. Maximum might, like I said, increases our affinity when we have full stamina. But at level five, you get a few increased effects. For example, normally with maximum might, when you use your stamina up and you're waiting for it to recharge, maximum might does not kick in straight away. At level five, as soon as your stamina is full, the affinity increase kicks in straight away again. 
But anyway, you also have stun resistance level 3, preventing any stun effects on your hunter, which is a personal quality of life skill that I really enjoy. You have health boost level 3, weakness exploit level 3, item prolonger level 3, although this may only be level 2 depending on the jewels you have available to you. You have horn maestro level 2, effluvial resistance level 2, again a byproduct of our gear. You have stamina surge level 1, again another byproduct of the gear but helps us recharge our stamina quickly, which works well in conjunction with maximum might. You have free mill level 1, protected polish level 1, and as for the set bonus, you have the glavenous essence maximum might secret, increasing the maximum might skill to that potential level 5, up from just level 3. So as you can see this is a fairly strong build with lots of options available to it. The main downside is the raw attack of the build thanks to the Gamma Chorus 2 having such low raw attack but with the increased blast rating as well as the songs available to it it shouldn't matter too much. Also so long as you're making use of your affinity based skills you can kind of make up for the low raw attack. Now you can swap out the weapon if you want for something that's a little bit stronger, but remember you are sacrificing some large jewel slots if you do so. But nonetheless, personally I find this a fun build, especially when taken into consideration a monster's ailment weaknesses, and if they're weak to blast, then this build is incredibly fun. So there we have it, those are full set beginner builds that I use for the hunting horn in Monster Hunter World Iceborne. Now of course there are a lot more mix sets to come, and as I always say you don't have to use what is shown in these videos. Use what you want to use, as most tasks in Monster Hunter World Iceborne can be taken on with any weapon or gear set. Also builds taken from previous seasons can still work in Iceborne, at least for early game. They'll definitely have the DPS, but they may lack the survivability. But anyway, I hope you found this video helpful or informative, and until next time, I've been Darkblade, bringing you beginner Iceborne builds for the Hunting Horn in Monster Hunter World Iceborne. Hope you enjoyed the video, thanks for watching, subscribe and like for more.